How are we doing everybody? Today is day two of our interview with Mirza Big, famous physical chemical sociologist, author of the 1987 book New Dimensions in Sociology. So to explain how I discovered Mirza, we're going to take a look at World Cat Identities here. Mirza has uh, six works published in 12 publications in at least one language and his works are held in 94 libraries according to World Cat Identities. And he completed his PhD right here. Then in 1987 he published New Dimensions in Sociology and then in 2000 he started publishing 1987 he published Democracy Displaced in Pakistan Case History of Disasters of Social Pollution. Then he published in 1999, Social Pollution and Global Poor Governance, Analysis of Psyche of Governing Hierarchy, New Dimensions in Sociology, a Physical Chemical Approach to Human Behavior. And that is held in 18 WorldCat libraries worldwide. So in 2006, Google started making its uh, World, Google library and started scanning the books of all the uh, publications in the world. So then in the years to follow, in 2014, I just started, I got to the point where I was searching for works on physical chemical sociology, physical chemical economics, physical chemical philosophy, and that's how I discovered Merz's book. And uh, by the discovery of the book, his publication of the book in 1987 uh, puts his ideas in circulation and what's called the exchange force of that book is the result of Mirza's choice to make me come to visit him in Pakistan. He chose, he chose me by the way of the force, the force of his publication forced me to come to visit him to Pakistan. <laughs> this, is in, this, is, <laughs> this is in response to an earlier question on why he was chosen. To, you know, to, why, did he, why did I choose him? And I said, no, Mirza, you chose me to come to Pakistan. <laughs> it's the other way around. No, sir, you chose me to come here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I... But I still give thank you credit to you uh, because you chose me. Okay, well, we'll it's a one. There's two points it's of view. It's not the question of choosing; it's the question of discovery. Uh, well, you, you discover me. The, here, I'll give you one example. Here, we'll we'll settle this with reference to Goethe. So we're gonna I'm gonna show you the original German translation of the title Elect of Affinities, and the the, the, trans, the name of the book is called. The choice of the elective attractions, and it was called Die, Die Walder Shafton, and uh, I'll I'll show you that. So the the question he wants to know where the choice comes and who chooses who in these reactions. So I'm going to explain how he looked at it. So if you type in elective affinities title decoding, you come to this. So the original, this is the original publication of Goethe's elective affinities, Die, the Wall. Der Schaften, the choice of the elective affinity. So his question was, Wall means choice, Wall, Wer Schaften is the elective affinities here. But the key term here, Wer Schaften, means choice of elections or choice of kindred or choice of your ally, allied, uh, who you interrelated with or con congregated with. So another alternative is unions, so where there are ties. So where did the you ask where did the choice come for us to come together and form a tie? And he Goethe had the same question in respect to the book here. So say A and B are together, but then C comes in and A, which is Charlotte, or B which is the captain, one of them decides they want to go the the choice comes to go associate with C, the captain. So the question Goethe had in his mind is where does the choice come from? For there's three different there's three different chemical species. And he wanted to know where does the choice of the elective attractions come from. So in the same case, you ask me, why did I choose you? Uh, from the bigger picture of the reactions in the system, you want to know where does the choice come from. There's always an antecedent before that brings about the choice. So that's my that's my <laughs> joke. That's my joke for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, now that we've got that out of the way, we're going to take a look at uh, 
a little, we're going to do a little review from yesterday. We, we, we gave an introduction of MRSA, his education, how he got into physical chemical sociology, and now we're going to take a look at a, a quick selection of the top 10 quotes from the first 22 pages, or chapter 1 of his book. We'll take a quick diagram here. So you have, he has, you take water and hydrogen, you introduce sodium into the, the, the reaction. For example, a lot of people in America, they like to take sodium and drop it in the toilet and the toilet explodes. explodes. So where does the choice come for these, where's the choice where oxygen detaches from hydrogen because it has less affinity with oxygen and has more affinity with the nitrogen. So the, the, the reaction dart, and this is the chemical, the bonding bracket, does oxygen choose to go with sodium or is it forced to go to sodium? In the same way with uh, the captain, he's bonded Charlotte, but then if he, if another, if someone else is, comes in here, whether it be his old friend, the captain, uh, or someone, where does the choice come from for this reaction, just like this reaction? So he was, he wanted to send a coded secret message by titling the book, The Choice of Elective Associations. Where does the choice come for the elections or who we associate with? So we're going to review a few quotes from yesterday's talk or interview. From the introductory matter, pages 8 through, Roman numerals 8 through 11, according to Big Quaid, a few natural phenomena are so well known that one wonders why the degree of universality of phenomena has not been identified out of the observations starting from the atomic and molecular level up to the celestial. So here we have just to get us. Uh, this is a diagram from University of uh, Chemical Thermodynamics professor in America. It was made in 2016, and he got a lot of awards for this. This is a way of explaining chemistry to simple people, and they've used it in about 12 universities worldwide. So he says, uh, according to chemical equilibrium. Each chemical species will balance in different phases present within a system like water and oxygen present as both a, a gas and a vapor. So here we have uh, a liquid and a vapor system. So Mirza, here's Mirza's social beaker, like his the cover of his book. And he has one social system here, for example, uh, Pakistan or India. And there's migrants coming out of Pakistan. For example, Mirza when he was 15 years old, migrated out of India into Pakistan. And uh, Mirza, well, that was because of the uh, separation of the, uh, uh, the Indian Muslims from the Indian Hindus. So they, were, they separated out of one phase system and formed two phase system. India split off into the Pakistan, which was the Indian Muslims. And so here's, one, here's a picture of Mirza, this molecule right here, migrating out of India and going to the new land of Pakistan. So he developed a whole social uh, society theory of, trans, of, of molecules going into systems and out of systems. So this chemistry professor says over here that uh, the chemical equilibrium, for example, between species going in and out of two systems is based on the Gibbs free energy, the maximum amount of useful work that can be pulled from a closed system. So, MRSA, right here we have two chemical species, water, H2O, has a certain Gibbs free energy sub I, and we have oxygen, which has Gibbs free energy sub J. So, do you, in your view, would this be considered analogous or similar to a, a smaller human? If that's correct? Okay. And then this is the Gibbs free energy of one species, for example, the Gibbs free energy of one person, and this is the Gibbs free energy of another person. And the sum of these gives free energies constitute the free energy of the social system. Yeah. Okay. Well, so down here we says each species present present has what is its own pure gives free energy. That would be the, to the total of the sum of which is the total energy that the individual species would contribute to the mixture. So I think what the person chemist here is talking about when he talks about pure gives free energy is kind of the uh, the internal pressure that you talked about. Remember, mm -hmm. you're talking about internal pressure, internal pressure right? and then you have external pressure, and the sum of those pressures, uh, 
add up to the Gibbs free energy of the system. So he says here that because we do have different species, whether in a beaker or in a society, there is an overall Gibbs free energy change of the system. And the sum of the species constitute the total Gibbs free energy change of the system. Big's idea here, down here, is that this beaker right here is what Bert Big calls a social, social beaker. Now Goethe called this, the Big defines this as the social beaker, but Goethe defines these things as the social retort. So we'll take a look at that just to see. So here's the laboratory retort. Uh, this is the liquid system, and the there's there's a flame underneath boiling the social system, and the products are being precipitated off the, of the out of the social system. So here's Big when he was age 15 in India, and he's a, being evap he becomes an evaporate, goes out of India and goes into Pakistan, and the he's cooled down by the cold water condensation, and he forms goes into the new system of of Pakistan, which is the Indian uh, phase of uh, Indian Muslims. Now, Goethe called this, in his lectum finis, his idea was that the state was the similar to the retort, or what Big calls the social beaker. So Goethe considers A and B the state, and then if you add different species, for example, the captain, his friend, into the state, he wants to know what will happen in the reactions. So each chapter of the book, Elect of Finis, invites different, this is Goethe thinking about what would happen. So Big thinks about this in a macroscopic way of large phases of people moving out in and out of social system because that's what he was experienced uh, during the transformative years fought in World War One, World War Two, and the separations that took place in India and Pakistan. What about this? Helen Forms, so he says, people are like particles. They behave in groups as if they were molecules in a test tube. And this is a fictional story from called Milton's Progress, but you agree with this, that's correct? Vic? Okay, good. Well, I agree with two. Mirza agrees. And so there's very few of us in the world that believe this sort of philosophy, physical, chemical philosophy, as we would call it. But hopefully, when you watch the video, you see Mirza and I agreement on this, that you can understand that thinking like this gives you a clear picture of uh, the world you exist in and the way social, social phenomena occurs. Here's a quote from page two from yesterday. Mirza says that the likes and dislikes of living beings have been compared with chemical affinities between different compounds. And then here we, again he points out that the reverse has not occurred, that this idea has not attracted the attention of either the social scientists or the physicists. And he says this is, has to do with what's called compartmentalization. And this has been called doctrinary departmentalism by John Q. Stewart. Hydraism by myself is that as knowledge starts sprouting, they become like a hydra, and they go off and want to form their own department, and the knowledge gets fragmented or separated. And so there, we don't have any universal geniuses uh, as, as much as there was before. And this has also been called anti-interdisciplinarity, or Herrick's Humpty Dumpty. And you can click on these online. Uh, page two and three, Mirza says that the uh, Interpret physical chemical laws in solution, give us uh, Raoult's law and Henry's law, which are deviations from my, the ideal solution. And Raoult's law, let's just take a look at this so we can get on the same page here, is that it's a law of thermodynamics established by Fran, Francis Marie Ma, Ra, Raoult in 1987, states that the partial pressure of each component in an ideal mixture of liquids is equal to the vapor pressure of the pure component multiplied by its small fraction in the mixture. So mathematically, for a single component in an ideal solution, the partial pressure is equal to the P sub I superscript star is the vapor pressure of the pure component, and Xi is the mole fraction. So the partial pressure here is the so in your opinion here, Mirza, give us an example of Raoult's law in the sociological, in your idea of a sociological extrapolation of Raoult's law. What would be an example in your mind for the, uh, say you have, for example, so we have the, uh, the total pressure over here if we combine 
uh, once the solution has reached equilibrium, that is, the species start stop going in and out of the beaker from the liquid phase society to the gas phase society, and they've reached equilibrium. The total vapor pressure of the solution, which is the pressure just above the surface of the liquid, uh, can be determined by combining Reynolds law with Dalton's law of partial pressures to yield the total pressure, which is the sum of the partial pressures times the mole fraction times the partial pressures times the uh, the mole fraction. So, for example, in your mind, if I'm stating this correctly, this could be India before the uh, 1940s, and these are the partial pressures of the um, Indian Muslims times their f fraction in society, and this is the partial pressure of the Indian Hindus mm -hmm. times the partial pressure, and this could be sum and makes, the, right? makes the total pressure of the system. Yes. Okay. Right. 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 He also compares this to Henry's law. He says we can apply Henry's law and to uh, society governing certain social systems governed as a liquid phase society. So Henry's law states that uh, it's a gas law, it states that the amount of dissolved gas in a liquid is proportional to its partial pressure above the liquid. So going back to this diagram here, if this was the partial pressure if we measure the partial pressure of this one component, say the uh, Hindu Muslims versus the Hindu or the Indian Hindus versus the Indian Muslims, the partial pressure above here is going to give us a measure of the mole fraction in the liquid. That's the correct in your view. Right. Okay. How did then? Uh, how did you? Where did you come across this this uh, idea of extrapolation of liquid solution theory into the social phenomena? This is this was the phenomenon that was prevailing at, uh, in, uh, at the time of partition. Five, five or six years, it's not five, five or six years past uh, the partition days. It's in, in the whole. What, what year was the partition? Nin 1954? 1947. 47, okay. 1947. And the, 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 there was a two-nation two theory already existing. And people, people in, in uh, on the Muslim side, they were thinking that ours is, is a heterogeneous solution. This is a heterogeneous society, and no, nothing is going to come out of this uh, heterogeneous state. If in, in, in another circumstances, there will have to be partition. Either recognize the identity. The Muslims were losing the identity, mm -hmm. and they, they, they wanted the British to recognize the identity and to separate after quitting, mm -hmm. quit and separate, or sit and separate and quit. The the Hindus did not agree to that. Mm -hmm. They never wanted it, but the the dialogue had prolonged to such an extent that the uh, Hindus, they, they, they said, it's, it's a headache. Mm -hmm. It's quite a headache. Under the circumstances, it's better to cut off the head rather than uh, put on with that. Okay. And then, so, <laughs> they, they were so frustrated. So, it was frustration. Yeah. In, the, in, in thermodynamics, it's the, it's, the, it's the entropy had taken over. Uh, lower, uh, entropy, entropy. Entropy had taken take hold. Entropy had taken hold. Yeah. Okay, so one question is, in what year did you start thinking about the partition in terms of Raoult's law and Henry's law? Do you remember what year that was? Well, I, I, I perceive that in about, uh, the, the, during my studies uh, as a graduate uh, student. 1974. 74, okay. 1974. All right, we'll talk about more about the partition when we get to chapter two of his book. He says on page three, Merza says that the uh, if the study of fugacity is applicable to the escaping tendency of, an or of a set of organisms from a certain environment, for example, the Pakistani Muslims from the environment of India, 
then it could be extended to the process of urbanization. So MERS is the first person ever done theory, social fugacity theory, which is very interesting. And he, uh, over here we have the uh, chemist, the chemical thermodynamicist trying to teach the student fugacity. And he says, we define the contribution of, the, of each species to the overall Gibbs free energy as the uh, chemical potential. And it's this chemical potential which is an abstract concept that is the driving force for mass transfer for species to move to different phases of different spaces. So he's comparing, uh, he says down here, this is where the fugacity comes in. Because we can, if we can measure the fugacity, we can measure the, uh, the chemical potential which moves uh, species in and out of systems, for example, from India to Pakistan or from Pakistan to England or Pakistan to Canada, which is the measure, which is the chemical potential. And so this comes from uh, Lucas Landher. So you can click online. So now we're going to, to summarize from yesterday, we're at page seven code here. And Mertza talks about how the, uh, the melting of crystals and putting pressure on crystals can be similar to the melting of society uh, for example, if we introduce uh, certain antisocial elements into a crystal, it lowers the melting point. Or if we put pressure only when the limit has exceeded to the entire lattice, the melting occurs. Similar forces are operating in society. So, in MERSA, in your view, to summarize, the, uh, we can compare uh, certain bigger cities, well-ordered cities to a lattice, a crystal lattice, and then if we put impure antisocial elements into the crystal, for example, uh, terrorists, it lowers the melting point of society. That's correct? You want me to... Uh, no, just uh, you agree that you, 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 in your mind, certain big, large cities can be compared to crystals. That's correct. And that you can lower the melting point, melt, melt the society by introducing antisocial elements. So if you take out the antisocial elements, you can raise the melting point and keep the city in well-ordered uh, ideal solution or a well-ordered, well-structured crystal. That's correct? Uh, in, in chemistry, we, we characterize purity by the melting point of the crystal. We always try to crystallize the compound in a certain form. If it is a if it is a crystalline form, then we consider that as a compact society. Mm -hmm. The more compact the, 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 the uh, mo molecular orientation, the, the better, the, the higher will be, the, will be the lattice energy. Mm -hmm. And the high lattice energy characterizes, characterizes purity. Okay. Now, in, in case of melting, the lattice, ener lattice energy is lowered. Okay. And the, therefore, disruption. Therefore, there is disruption in the lattice. Okay. And what, one question. Uh, lattice energy is measured in what? What are the units for lattice energy? Calories. Per yeah. per mole. Calories per, per mole. Yeah. Okay. So, in your opinion, uh, in society. In the future, we, we will be able to measure social lattice energy. Yeah. Calories per mole. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, Very, you see? Yeah, Very, uh, this person is well advanced than compared to your average uh, person. Maybe, maybe like four or five people in the history of humankind have ever thought of social lattice energy and that this, there is, exists social lattice energy in society and that we can measure it and it can be raised or lowered using, um, by people coming together and and bringing about uh, methods for calculation. So very, it is very, a, very, it, very intelligent thinking. You did <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I did that. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I know I've been through a lot of, I, everybody knows uh, if you look on uh, online, you type in top thousand, 1,000 geniuses, I have them all ranked. So Immersion, in my view, is, is in the top, top 100 geniuses at least in the history of humankind. So that's very, uh, very good. That's, yes. that, 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 that's what I call a social interview. Oh, okay. Social. Then, uh, the, in, in, in case the social energy is, is uh, 
uh, it is disturbed mm -hmm. by the driving force from outside. Mm -hmm. There is there is a there is driving force inside, mm -hmm. and that is internal pressure. Mm -hmm. But there, if there is a driving force of, from outside, you mean the in that case there there will be disruption of the lattice. Okay. And the internal pressure internal pressure would be uh, would be lower. Okay. Just to clarify, when you speak about driving force outside, you're talking about driving force outside of the person, but within the social system. Yeah. Okay. It's the social system. Okay. The if, if if there is a social pressure from outside, consider that in terms of the federal, federal forces, on the provincial forces, or the or the or the or 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 in urban area, or in an mm -hmm. in, in, in a social unit. Okay. Then the the or the the outside pressure by the by, by the federal forces will will be do, dominant. On the inter internal forces of the social unit, okay, and it will be controlled. But if the internal pressure is too high, if the internal pressure high is too high, and can resist the outside pressure, the out, uh, outer pressure, mm -hmm. in that case there will be mutiny, mm -hmm. and the mutiny can be controlled either way, either put in. Uh, a bomb, mm -hmm. tear gas, disperse the mob, or to do, 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 do anything. Those are the means by, by which the internal pressure can be controlled. Okay, very, very good. Let's move forward to now to page 10 here. So from yesterday, we got to page 22. We're going to keep reviewing up to page 22, but Mirza says on page 10, uh, there are reactions of combustibles with air, and he says certain metals easily burn in air, but others form an oxide and will allow burning with difficulty. And he says sand and sand, lime and clay do not burn, but phosphorus must be stored out of contact with air so that spontaneous fire is prevented. And he says now these interactions in societies have been discussed or in his book and will be discussed in subsequent chapters, particularly on the decline of societies. So we can compare this with the quote down here by Ludwig Butchner who wrote in 1855, uh, he published uh, Force and Matter, and he's the person behind me with the quote on my shirt here. <laughs> I'll get a little closer here. That the uh, uh, man reacts with woman like hydrogen reacts with oxygen. And here we have the affinities are equal to the negative of the partial uh, differential that gives free energy per extent of reaction at constant temperature and pressure. And this defines what's called reaction existence. So Mirza has the same philosophy as in terms of uh, uh, people reacting together like Ludwig Butcher did in Germany. And to give you one example, when he published this, they kicked him out of the university. He was, a phys he was the, one of the head of the physics department at, uh, I don't remember the name, but when he published this book, it was so controversial that he dismissed him from his post. So he says, just as man and woman attract one another, so oxygen attracts hydrogen, and in love and union with it forms water, that mighty omnipresent element without which no life nor thought would be possible. He says, likewise, just as Big has said, potassium and phosphorus entertain such a violent passion for oxygen that they enter, that even underwater they burn, i.e. unite themselves with the beloved object. So the, we both have the same thing. All three of us, Butchner, Big, and myself, all have the same uh, physical chemical philosophy. One thing to point out here, this is what, when you speak about uh, anthropom anthropomorphizing elements, speaking about hydrogen and oxygen as beloved objects, that's what's called anthropomorphism speak. So in modern uh, terms, we now you have to de-anthropomorphize ourselves. And when we speak about reactions between whether it's between humans or chemicals, we have to use a what's called physical chemical neutral terminology. That's use terms that are acceptable at, at the social scale and at the uh, the uh, micro scale or the ten to the minus minus tenth meter scale. So uh, this is good good uh, good job, Mirza, on this one. And now we're going to go to. Another quote on page 10 here, Mirza is talking about reaction rates. 
So in his chapter, he says that reaction weights can be in increased either by increasing the concentration, increasing the pressure, or increasing the temperature, or increasing the affinity. And this increases the reaction rate. And Mac Mirza, in his first chapter, goes through examples of each of these kinds sociologically and chemically so that we can see how to increase reaction rate. So here's a reaction. And we have uh, the reactants are what's on the left side, A and B, whether smaller chemical species or larger human chemical species. And they chemically react. This, the arrow sort of shows, defines the, the, it's called the affinity arrow or the dart. And these are the products. So A and B in this case form C. And the, re the reaction rate is the rate at which reactants transform into products. And Big says the certainty and reaction rate depends primarily on the affinity with which with, that's defined by the reaction dart that was introduced by William Cullen in uh, 1610, if I'm not mistaken. He, was, he developed this reaction arrow and when he was giving lectures. He would he'd draw the bonding bracket and he would draw the reaction arrow sim, would sim, sim, symbolize the direction in which the chemical affinity was directing the chemicals to go. So Big says uh, with which the reactants have one another. And then down here he says that the uh, Rusting of iron, burning of phosphorus, and the combination of hydrogen with chlorine uh, with it will combine with explosive violence, and sometimes with exposure to radiation are some ways that uh, we can get the uh, nitrogen to react. And he says individuals in society similarly have their affinities, and hence reaction rates. So he's pioneering here what's called human reaction rate theory. So, uh, so in the next month I'll write an article on this. You can click online and see how the history of human reaction rate theory started with big and it's continuing forward. And now we're up to page 10 and 11 here from yesterday. Mirza talked about uh, the next factor which determines the reaction is the velocity of the, the reaction velocity is concentration. So the higher the concentration, the more they collide with each other and the faster that we'll have the reaction rate. Next on page 11 here, Mirza talks about how the chemical reactions increase with temperature. Now, here we're going to ask Mirza about an example of social temperature. So, Mirza, you say that if a chemical reaction can increase with temperature if we heat the social system, what's an example in your mind where you, of an example of a social system historically that has been heated? Social temperature increases and increases the reaction rate. Social temperature is the heat mm -hmm. that is generated within the society. Mm -hmm. As you, as the pressure increases or as the temperature increases, there is a, there is always some reaction or control of reaction. In case of social social temperature, social temperature, I was always thinking that something some some event may have we have induced commotion. Commotion in, in, is, is in kinetic energy terms temp raises the temperature. Mm -hmm. Molecular mo molecular disturb mo in, in chemistry it will be molecular disturbances. And mm -hmm. in in, going into molecular physics, it will be breaking of the bond or in, in the breaking of bond uh, loses the bond energy. It's converted so into the, kinetic energy. So that the bond energy is, is transmitted into, into convert, transforms into temperature. Mm -hmm. So that is the temperature, that is the social temperature in the case of when you apply it to the, uh, to the social structure. In that case, the commotion in the, in the society will, will mark the temperature increase, the social temperature. Can you think of a, one, a name of one society that comes to mind? Uh, for example, uh, England, America, uh, Pakistan, India, well, Russia. You see, the spontaneous, spontaneous reactions have a very high temperature. Any explosion, for example, the, 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 the terrorist attack in New Zealand, mm -hmm. that, 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 that created such a high temperature that it disturbed the entire New Zealand maybe the entire world. 
created so, raised the social temperature. The social temperature, social temperature of within the mosque, uh -huh. the social temperature within the mosque was so much that it, it, it the everybody has outside outside the mosque even felt that. Oh, okay, that's a good example. That that's commotion. So next here we're at uh, page eleven again. He says that the rays, the rise in temperature and consequent the stirring of the molecules, whether social molecules, causes an increase in volume. But if the volume is fixed, uh, there is a development of force normal to the area of the body, and is which is known as pressure. So he's talking about social pressure. Social pressure. Yep. And mm -hmm. uh, one thing that's interesting here, Mirza, that I just discovered late, recently is called lateral pressure. Mm -hmm. Because when you try to theorize about social pressure, in terms of how you measure it, in terms of units, we just have, uh, we, we tend to think of barrel, uh, atmospheric pressure. And uh, we measure it in terms of Pascal's. But there was one person who talked, who came up with the idea of lateral pressure as a kind of uh, measure of social. So he was Niccolo Tartaglia. Tart, uh, Tart, uh, in uh, 1545, he wrote a booklet on Jordanus Nemoranus. And he stated the following. He says that the deeper the liquid is, the more it will compress the deeper parts. So, for example, if this is, a, this is a containing wall, and this is liquid here, and this is air over here, the deeper we go over here, we have deeper lateral pressure. And so the lateral pressure is, is, is the, the definition of what social pressure is. It's a lateral pressure between people. So if we have a social system that's like this, the pressure that we have, the atmospheric pressure is constant, but we have a lateral pressure that uh, changes. So instead of the deeper you go into a liquid, this is deeper you go into the center of a dense society. For example, if you go into the center of New York, the center of uh, Tokyo, the, the lateral pressure increases the closer you get to the center of the city. And so he developed this whole thing. And he says that the, uh, for they are compressed they are compressed by both the upper parts, vertical pressure, and by those next to them. So in this case, the social extrapolation is that the human social liquid is compressed by those social molecules next to them, and he's defining lateral pressure. And uh, according to a, a pressure historian William Middleton, he says this is the first clear statement of the idea, idea of both lateral, vertical pressure and lateral pressure. So this is kind of interesting. I thought that uh, it applies to our, our studies of social pressure. So next we have uh, Merzis on page 11 and 12. He's talking about how uh, chemical reactions take place at the boundary or interface of systems. Stirring or shaking you, so you have to put the things in contact to make them react. And the extrapolation of this, he says that sometimes when you have meetings, people, people don't want to chemically react with each other. But as he, he says if you put pressure on people in a meeting by directly asking them, what is your opinion of this, they'll open their mouth. And so putting the extra pressure on the people causes the reaction, just like the, you have to stirring and shaking of miscible substances brings fresh interfaces and reaction takes place by renewed contact. So he says, unsociable persons do not usually interact, but when they are faced with different situations in a group for a sufficiently long time, they do enter into dialogue. So according to Merge, the enter, entering in the di of diagram, dialogue would be silica, the woman here, reacting with lime, and if they're uh, significantly stirred or shaken, they'll, they'll bring about dialogue type of reaction. There's one thing about this about social pressure mm -hmm. that, that I, I should mention. Yeah. It also comes through motivation. The speeches, they motivate you. Yeah. And if the speech is sufficiently uh, sufficiently motive, they hit you with force, that, force per unit area. That 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 pressure. Yeah. That pressure that that, that uh, I call motivation pressure. Yeah. That motivation pressure will in, induce the audience 
Yes. Into thinking as to what you are going to do. Yeah. What, what the baby speaker is saying. So that's for smart, yeah. That's good. So when somebody speaks, say to a crowd of a thousand people, their their voice and their, their expression of their face, the light and the sound waves are putting a force per unit area on the audience and that cre and creates a pressure which can cause them into react reaction. Okay. This quote right here is again about lime and silica. For example, do not form silicate unless heated together. But if they are, the two are ground together, for example, silica and lime here, if they're ground together, we can bring about a reaction according to Big. Now, on page 13, he says, the non-availability of basic amenities in a rural area leads to breakdown of their social environment. This process compared with that of solids towards their melting point. So that's, a, that's an interesting point philosophy. And we've also talked about internal pressure of the villages. Uh, push the workers. Can you explain this part right here? I want to know about this. You say the internal pressure of the villages pushes the workers to a town to find work. So can you explain that in more detail? As you said before, the internal pressure is the mind. So can you give me an example of the internal pressure of someone's mind pushing a villager to make them leave a town? A good example, a hands-on example. The, the, the living condition, the living condition in the rural area is such that the people there uh, have not, not much of freedom. Mm -hmm. they, they, are, they are under obligation of the landlord and they, they have to live with very little means. They have no means to survive. They depend on the that, 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 that There is too much of pressure from, from this landlord. So that the, 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 okay. the liquid, the, the structure, the bond between the between one person and the other person is broken. So in this and there is, I, I, in the case of melting, it's a melting pot, sort of so so sort of melting pot in the in the rural area. So in this that, so the vapor, so so there, there is always a tendency, tendency among the people in the rural area to do something, escape. Mm -hmm. Escape from the problem. So the internal pressure here, the example would be the landlord, the pressure of his mind. Pressure. He's putting pressure on the, pressure. the people in the village and that, that causes them to leave. And where, which bond is broken in the pressure, village? Pr pressure and temperature, as I said, they, 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 they are dependent. They, okay. they control. So the bond? The pressure from the, pressure from the landlord mm -hmm. and the temperature from, in, uh, among themselves. Okay. And social pressure among themselves. And as to what, what should we do? What should we do? Mm -hmm. There is commotion. Yeah. That is temperature. That commotion leads them to think about what to, about what to do. Okay. They will they will migrate in that case. Okay. Well, I'm confused about one point. You said the bond is broken. Which which bonds are broken here? Is it the bond between the person who the worker who leaves the town and his family? As you're saying from from the family as well as from the from the uh, rural Society. environment. Okay. All right. That's good. Let's go. Uh, so next year, page 14 and 15, Merz is talking about some 15 percent of the population of Afghanistan has vaporized. He calls people uh, on a global basis says there's 11 million refugees or evaporates. So he says that. The gas particles are similar to migrants. Social system is a li tends to be liquid social systems, and when the uh, system becomes too heated, the migrants leave the liquid state of the system, and looking they go to new locations. So here's an example of evaporates on the right over here, leaving the rural area to go look for work in new places because they've been uh, the fr fugacious people. If that's correct. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's interesting. All right, so now we're on the last quote here, page 22 before we... This is one of my favorite quotes here. Physical chemical laws can be extended to a variety of human relations and 
interactions. This is very, a uh, very strong statement, very good, uh, it's a very powerful statement. It's uh, something, people don't understand this. If you tell them to this, say, no, you can't. Like your friend from yesterday, he said, no, the people in zoology, they handle this department. Remember? <laughs> 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 well, the, the physical chemical laws, there, there, there would be a number of laws. For example, the colligative properties. Colligative properties. Colligative properties. That means the mating and boiling and then the gas laws. Think of the gas laws. The gas laws, yeah. There's a yeah. There's a lot of people have done try to do social gas. Gas, laws, gas laws is for uh, control the gives you the temperature and pressure. Mm -hmm. We have just seen about the pressure. So starting from the from the gas law, you uh -huh. can imagine that everything is being controlled by thermodynamics. And if if, if the if if the if it is thermodynamics, in that case, all the all, most of the laws. Most of the laws that uh, of nature are interpreted. So I will give you an example of um, Charles, the grandson of uh -huh. the grandson of Charles Darwin. His name was Charles Galton Darwin. He was one. He was one of the first people to write a book on human dynamics. He was one of the first people to write a book on use social gas pressure theory. So you you were talking about gas laws. We agree, we agree with the dynamism, yes, but not with the, not the evolution of spectrum. I'll just give you an example. I think, I think the condi conditions are changing with each, with each change. See, we, 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 the Earth is not the only, uh, it is not the only uh, celestial body. That is being interacted by energy inside or outside. For example, this is the solar solar energy. Mm -hmm. Earth is not being controlled just by, by solar energy, but also by the cosmic energy. So the, the whatever is happened in the small, to me, and, um, and uh, according to quantific calculations, it is the result of the cosmic energy. Cosmic radiation. Cosmic more, radiation, okay. Cosmic radiation rather than just a solar energy. Mm -hmm. Right now, the solar, solar the, the sun is inactive rather, mm -hmm. much, much, much less active than it was, it was in, in, in the, in the uh, 23rd cycle. So, just a general question. Are you, uh, Charles Darwin, you're a, fan, you're, a, you're a fan of his work or you don't like his work? And we, the chart, Darwin. Uh huh. Is what is your opinion of his ideas? Well, he has his own theories. He has his own theories, and he he, he has he 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 has backed up the his theory with, uh, based on his observation in in South America. Okay. Well, f f take a look at this. Is inter inter related to your talking about the gas law. Let me just show you this real fast. So in 1952, uh, his grandson, Charles Galton Darwin, who was a physicist, he wrote the book called The Next Million Years at the age of 65. And he, he spoke about people as human molecules, and he was one of the first persons to use the term human thermodynamics. But if, right in the first chapter, he used the gas law. So here's his book here. And in the introduction chapter, he uses this. He wants to introduce a subject he calls human thermodynamics that he says will be able to predict the next million years of the, he said he calls systems conservative dynamical systems of human molecules. And he says people are molecules like the ideal gas law. He uses Boyle's law. So right here he says that uh, pressure times the volume equals a constant of the social system. Yes. And he says that, uh, well, this is, you can come back and read this online. I will. Have to, it's a little bit. Page is a little bit long, but the long and the short of it is he uses the Boyle's law. He says that's kind of a, we can apply that to social systems a little bit. So if, if pressure 
increases. Let's take a look. So volume will be inversely proportional to uh, maybe pressure. In, in to RT. Yeah. So he said if, if we increase, if we decrease the volume, the pressure will increase. Or if we increase the volume, and he says that's a good way to understand social systems. But getting back to, uh, let's get on to, well, here's one, one quick question. This is related to Darwin. I'll show you this picture and see what you think about it. <laughs> 